my name is Vila Sundari, uh, and I'm the developer of Kihab. Kihab is uh, an online system that helps people organize uh, martial arts tournaments. And this video is an overview of, of, of what you can do with Kihab, and it's really in, in two parts. So the first part is, is what I consider to be the core, which is online registration, uh, payments, and, and managing, managing brackets. And then the second part uh, is what you can do with Kihab uh, on the day of the tournament, which is uh, scheduling, uh, scoreboards, uh, and wireless scoring. Uh, so let's get started. We start from the homepage uh, at kihab.com, and we're gonna go ahead and create a new tournament. Uh, we're gonna put in a name, and then select uh, which martial art we're using. Uh, in this case, we'll do ITF Rules Taekwondo. Uh, it's a good example because uh, the rules are fairly varied and, and we get to use many, many of the features. Uh, and then we have the ability to use uh, a previous tournament as a template, but in this case, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna start, start from scratch. Uh, and now we've got our first tournament created here. And our first job here really is uh, is to create, to set up the, the different categories that we're gonna use. So each tournament will be different in terms of uh, which rules, rules we're gonna offer, uh, which events we're gonna offer, and which categories will be in those events. The terminology here is that what we just created is a, is a tournament. Uh, and then each tournament, uh, which is something that you know happens on a, on a given Saturday, uh, is broken up into events. So patterns is an event, uh, and then sparring is an event, uh, and then we uh, then we set up set up categories inside these events. So so we can have sparring male adult minus seventy five kilo. That's uh, that's a category. Uh, so let's jump right in and, and and make make some categories. So we click on divisions here. Uh, and that takes us to the division editor, and, and these are uh, these are the default divisions for ITF uh, ITF patterns. And, and actually, we're just going to start by deleting everything uh, from here because we want to we want to make something something of our own. Uh, so here we we arrive at the at the blank uh, blank division editor. Uh, and first of all, we're gonna uh, define uh, the age groups that we're gonna have. And when we split the the sort of main patterns division into into age groups, we get the default uh, age groups. Uh, and and in the, this example, let's uh, let's let's make the age groups a little smaller. So so the default here is twelve and under, and then thirteen, seventeen, and eighteen plus. So this is a this is an inclusive range. Uh, so let's, for example, let's let's do a nine and under. Then we need to uh, make a new one. So we select insert below from here, uh, then say 10 to 12. Then maybe we think this is also too much. Uh, so that we get a little tighter age ranges here. So now we've got these five divisions set up. Uh, like so. So we have patterns uh, nine under, patterns ten and twelve, etc. So each of these boxes is is, is what I call a, a division here, uh, and each division then can then be further split uh, with with different rules. So for example, uh, we'll probably want to do uh, a split by rank here. So so this means just uh, just your belt level uh, here in ITF Taekwondo specifically. And for for the youngest group, let's do uh, let's do up to seventh cup, and then sixth cup, and up. And these would be our uh, our uh, groups by rank. And you know, in this example, for for the youngest kids, we we, we might stop here. Uh, we might not need to do uh, a gender based split at all. Since since the competitors are so young. Now for ten and twelve, let's let's uh, let's use the same same split as a starting point, and we're going to do that by doing a copy and paste. So we copy everything to the right from here, and then we select paste, 
uh, wherever we want to paste it. Like so. And now we're free to, to make changes to the to the one we pasted. This is just a, just a starting point. Uh, so let's say let's say we, we keep the up to seventh cup, but then we do a six until uh, until let's say third cup and then make a new one here for second cup and up. And let's say we want to do a male female split as well uh, for the 10 to 12 years. So we do a gender split like this. And we'll just copy the same one to the other uh, other belt groups. And so uh, let's in this example say uh, we would be happy with these uh, for the for the older groups as well. This might not be the case uh, in real life, but but uh, let's use this as an example of uh, of how we can save time by copying and pasting. So we just uh, paste this whole thing uh, to the other other age groups, and then also to the adults. And here we go. Good. So now now we're in this example. We're done with our uh, our patterns categories and we can we can go look at them here in the categories list uh, so we've got one line for each uh, each category we might do a number in here uh, we might call them p something p1 p2 p3 etc uh, and we'll just uh, put in some numbers uh, so that it's easier to refer to them when we talk uh, and all that uh, so now we're done with patterns now uh, I want to go into sparring as well because it works a little differently because we use uh, weight classes. Let's do the same thing here where we uh, first delete everything. And then just we'll, uh, we'll just define some example weight categories just to see how that works. So actually what we might want to do here is, is use the patterns divisions as a starting point and then do further splits uh, by, by by weight. So how that will work is we go to patterns and say copy all, which will just copy everything from here. Uh, and then we go back to sparring. Uh, and then and then we do a paste. Just to save time uh, and, uh, and in and have uh, have the same categories here. So if we're doing sparring, we might not actually care for the kids. We might not care if uh, what 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 rank they are. So we might just say clear children from here, uh, just to make make an age group, and then we uh, select select height maybe from here uh, for the kids. So let's let's do that, uh, and we'll get this uh, get this. Uh, weight class height class editor uh, where we can just type in the the classes that we want so we want to do a minus 40 a minus 50 a minus 60 let's actually do a minus 30 as well so we can just type in type in the limits uh, and the system will take care uh, of, of the rest like so so we got the minus 30 and then every 10 centimeters uh, and then a tall division and then uh, weights will work uh, in a very similar fashion. So uh, when we select weight from here, uh, let's say this is a this is from 25 or let's say 30 every uh, every five kilo. Uh, let's just say until 50, so 55 as as the heavy weight. Uh, and now we have weight classes, and. This is maybe the most uh, tedious part of, of setting up uh, because it's important to get the weight classes exactly right, um, just for safety's sake and everything. Uh, the good part is that then in subsequent tournaments we can we can just use these set setups uh, uh, as a starting point, or, or even maybe maybe we'll we'll just use the same ones if if the rules don't change in between. So this is something that only needs to happen once. Good, and uh, we are done uh, editing. Uh, we're not gonna we're gonna save time by not defining the rest of the weight categories in, in, in this demo. Uh, now we, what we do want to do here is is uh, add uh, add a breaking event. 
uh, so we're going to do a power test event and I'm adding this because it's it, it works differently from uh, from uh, patterns and sparring so so power test is a, is what I call a scorecard event where instead of having having matches or, or bouts uh, it's it's just people go one by one and then they uh, then they break, they get a score, and then higher score wins instead of having some sort of elimination bracket. Uh, so, so that's why we're making a power test, a power test category here. Uh, and and we're gonna be happy with with the the default divisions for power test. So now we've got the uh, we got our basic category set up, uh, and to open up registration. The next thing we would, we would want to do is uh, is set up entry fees and payments. So this is uh, this is optional. It's uh, it, it depends on on the organizer whether they want to uh, receive uh, receive pay, receive entry fees online. Uh, but it does save time. Uh, it, it does save time and and hassle when 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 you know that everybody's already paid and people don't need to uh, bring in cash to the event. Uh, you don't need to uh, you don't need to handle large large amounts of money uh, at, at at the tournament table so so there's a safety element there as well uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and set up a an entry fee system here uh, and we're just gonna go with a simple 25 euro per competitor and then uh, five euro per category uh, and we also have the ability to uh, to sell spectator tickets for example uh, in any kinds of tickets really uh, and also to to define uh, early bird pricing periods which uh, which help help with cash flow it, it, it's an incentive for people to register earlier so that uh, so that cash flow for the tournament is easier uh, so now we've got yeah we've got 25 plus five and we're gonna set up uh, a demo payment system here as well. Uh, we're just gonna use this one here, and uh, and then save good. Uh, and now we've got entry fees here. Uh, and now let's let's also create. Uh, create a school here uh, so that when people register they they have a, a school to select from let's make uh, let's make a new example school uh, so this is a demo school and uh, we are from Stockholm let's say and and then we put in put in a, a contact name here so we use this place of origin uh, Uh, place of origin question here uh, for the purposes of making making brackets because it's important in most cases that uh, that uh, that students or, or competitors from the same school aren't uh, aren't up against each other in the in the first round so we use uh, we, we use this this information that this is a Swedish school that this is a Stockholm school uh, to to make make brackets that are that are of higher quality and now we're we're ready to to open up our registration here uh, in, in this example. So, uh, so we publish the tournament, uh, and we say, okay, uh, registration is open. And now the, the categories that we, we set up earlier, uh, they inform the registration form here. Uh, so let's say we, we do this and we select, okay, we're from the demo school. Uh, let's put in some examples here, some fake data. Uh, let's say it, uh, our competitor is a male and we put in a birth date. Uh, and what's happening here, it's gonna calculate our age based on, uh, based on our birth date so that we don't accidentally get people, uh, people mistyping their age because uh, the tournament is still in the future so, so they just might get put in their old age instead of what it's gonna be. Uh, then it's uh, it's asking me to select which events I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna participate in, and then based on my selection, it's gonna ask for more information because that information is then used 
uh, used to put me in in the correct category. So so let's let's uh, make this example competitor. Uh, let's make them a, fir a first gap black stripe uh, person. Maybe they're seventy kilo. Uh, maybe they're one hundred and seventy centimeters tall. Uh, and then there's a there's a confirmation step. We could review the information. Maybe we. Uh, Maybe we made a made a mistake there. Uh, we we might go back and, and fix it, uh, and then we we, we uh, agree to to some stuff here. Uh, and this is uh and, and then we come to checkout. And this is what happens when when we require payment at uh, registration. Uh, and so this is this is optional, uh, but but used by used by many hosts nowadays. And we now, and we have the ability to to put in several competitors on onto one, uh, on, under one payment, so we don't have to pay pay for each competitor separately. Uh, and this example uses Stripe for payments, uh, and uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, make an example demo payment here. I'm just going to put in fake information there, and then fake card. We're going to pay 30 35 for the competitor. And now we're done registering. Uh, and, and what happens here now with, that we're registered uh, is that a bunch of emails get sent out. Uh, one for uh, the organizer, one for the person who organized, who, uh, who made the registration receipt. And then if, if the competitor is a different person, uh, to them as well, and then one email to the instructor of, of the school that they said they were part of. Uh, just so that the instructor can then then maybe look it over and say, okay, uh, um, this is actually wrong, you're, you're probably going to be uh, black belt already, or, uh, or, or just, to, just to get a double check on the information uh, so that we can catch any errors, uh, errors as early as possible. And now that uh, we've registered a competitor, uh, they've been put into uh, into a draw. So the 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 competitor we put in uh, was a 17 year old. Uh, so they have been put into sparring and and, and patterns and to their uh, to their correct categories. Uh, and this is uh, what I'm going to talk about next. Uh, the managing uh, managing of draws and brackets and and how to how do you then manage uh, the all the competitor information that we get uh, once people register? Uh, and to do that, I'm gonna create uh, create some demo competitors here. So this is gonna put in 50 more competitors uh, from from different countries, from different schools, so that we can get a look at how uh, how it then works when when we have uh, actual registrations in. Here we go. And let's also close up registration so that we can uh, we can see some of the some of the new information. So now that we're closed, closed, and closed, uh, this might happen automatically. We can set set a, de set a deadline for registering so that it uh, closes up at midnight on a given day. Uh, but once there, uh, uh, once it's closed, uh, we get these alerts here saying. Uh, some categories need merging, so this means uh, that in a given category there's only one person, uh, and we might want to merge that category up. So, for example, uh, they be they be competing against people who are older than themselves, or or in a, in a heavier category, etc. Uh, it depends on the situation what we want to do. Uh, and then the other thing is that uh, we have competitors who are missing missing divisions. Uh, now this is because we put in our demo competitors. Some of them are uh, under eighteen. And we didn't put uh, any any kids categories in power test. Uh, so in real life, we might not do that because power test uh, might be might be dangerous for kids. So uh, we might not do, want to do that. But in this this example, let's uh, let's put in some uh, some kids power test categories, which then means that uh, that those competitors should be put in uh, put into their to their categories 
let's see see if we get more information there right uh, the other thing is that that uh, power test requires a certain grade uh, so let's fix that also and and then just make a white belt breaking category sorry uh, which again is probably not something we would have in a real competition uh, but just to illustrate how we can uh, how we can change the categories later and then people get pulled into into them uh, based on the information that we uh, that we put in here so now the missing divisions alert is gone uh, and we still have these uh, categories to uh, to worry about that that need merging so let's have a look at the category list here uh, so let's see, okay, uh, we have P1 as one person, uh, P2 has, has two people. So let's, let's, uh, let's pretend we wanna merge these two together. So we hit merge here and, 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 we're, and we're, uh, we're, given, we're given a preview. Uh, so okay, it's gonna be three competitors. Uh, it's gonna be a third Dan and a seventh gap, so in real life, not something we would do. Uh, but let's let's mer merge these for for uh, for demo sake. So now we can see we've got these two categories together. Uh, we we sort of created a new one that contains the two. Uh, and then if we want to, we can we can we can undo as well. Uh, let's make this something like P one and two. So that we know that it's a it's a merged category. Uh, the next thing we would want to set up is is the different formats uh, of, of of how we want to how we want to run run the different categories. So so often uh, it's often the case that for three people we want to use round robins, and this just means uh, that everybody everybody fights uh, against everybody else once, and then we get uh, then we get a score like kind of like in in football. Uh, so let's look at what this looks like. Uh, so it's just one uh, one match for each pair, and then afterwards we 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 count the points points here. Win is one point, and then if we allow draws, that's half a point. Then for the larger categories, we'll it will most most likely we'll be using elimination brackets. Uh, other brackets are also available. For example, if we have uh, five or eight people, we could put in put them in groups. Uh, this be mostly used when uh, when there are a lot of juniors, when there are a lot of kids, and we want to we want to be able to uh, we want to be able to uh, guarantee that that they get experience from uh, from the tournament that they that even though they might lose their first uh, first fight, they they still still get more experience after that. So uh, so that's that's where uh, these group stages, also repechages, they they come in. But in this example, let's look at how uh, how we set up uh, elimination draws. So let's look at this P26. It's a 13-person elimination draw. And uh, this is what the system is giving us. So, so as we can see here, uh, the competitors from who are from the same school are all on, on different parts, different parts of the draw. Uh, so the Swedish demo school is from is here, uh, and then we've got the Danish school here, uh, and also the uh, the final competitor from Uppsala, which is a different city from from where this is from. Uh, they are from on different sides of the draw, as are the Argentinians. So if if uh, if we use seeding, for example, we have last year's champion. Uh, and we want to we want to give them the first seed. We can we're, we're free to change the draw here. For example, let's pretend that uh, one o five here is is the champion, and we want to seed them first. So we would just drag them on uh, to to the first seed, and we have we have a new draw. Uh, and we we even can can if we're doing manual seeding, we would we would probably lock them here. So that when new competitors are uh, are added and this draw is uh, draw is redrawn, uh, they stay on uh, on seed one. 
And if we want to, we can we can uh, we can just re-roll the whole thing uh, if if we want a new one. And and our first seed will will here will will stay at the same place. Uh, let's see what it looks like. Here we go. And we're still doing uh, pretty good on the school separation part. Now, of course, this is not, isn't always possible. If we, imagine if we had 10 people from uh, from the demo school, uh, some of them would need to go up against each other in, in the first round, but, but we do we do our best here to separate them. Uh, and and the, the, the bracketing is also uh, careful to give buys uh, fairly. So, uh, a buy just means that, that you don't need to fight in the first round. So here, seeds one, two, and three have a buy. And uh, and the way the way we do bracketing here is uh, is is fair, meaning that every competitor has the same probability of getting a buy, uh, regardless of which which school they school or country they're coming from. So so it might happen that that everybody who gets a buy is is from is from Argentina. Or, or is from Denmark, uh, but for each competitor, it's it's random. Uh, and in cases where we don't want to do these non-random uh, geographical uh, brackets, we can we can turn it off and do fully random random draws when when that's uh, that's what we want. And that would be our that would be most of uh, most of the work we would do in in terms of the managing the brackets in terms of managing. Uh, managing competitors, uh, there's there's ex exceptions. Of course, we 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 need to, for example, let's say we need to uh, withdraw somebody. They got sick. Uh, uh, they're not going to be able to come. So we would go to the competitor list, uh, and we would say, okay, let's let's uh, withdraw 150 from from sparring. They don't want, they they can't do sparring for some reason, but we'll keep them in. In, in patterns and power tests, for example, or uh, 138 is is uh, is not coming at all, uh, and they're they're sick or whatever, uh, and we just we might just uh, delete them altogether. Uh, and what happens here is that all their draws get re-rolled uh, because now the the school makeup changed, uh, so so we we're gonna do a a, a whole new different draw. And now an important thing here is that uh, we want to use uh, the hard copies of, of the draws on, on the day of the tournament, regardless of whether we're using online scheduling, online uh, online scarring. We, we want to have the hard copies so that so that if there's any problems with uh, with the internet, with electricity, uh, with the, uh, uh, with our computers, uh, then then we still have uh, still have the information that we need to to run the tournament. Uh, so each of the each of the draws are printable from here. Let's just print a few as an example. Here we go. And so this would be something that we would already do. Uh, we would already do on let's say tournament is Friday or is Saturday. We would already do a full printout on on Saturday, uh, even though we're pretty sure that we're going to make changes based on. Uh, based on who who might not show up on on, on Saturday, uh, and what helps us there is that is that we can we, we do change tracking of, of the draws, so we're able to look at uh, uh, look at when each category has changed and say okay uh, we did our printout and let's say let's say we did it uh, uh, two minutes ago so so we did it up to here but then these three still need to be. Uh, Still need to be uh, reprinted, and their their version two. So we would look at our printout and say, okay, we have version one of this category, uh, but what we're looking at here is already at version two. Uh, so so we'll need to uh, we'll need to reprint that one. Yes, very good. And now we're going to jump in time to uh, to the day of the tournament so what we talked about so far uh, is it is the the first part and really the most valuable part 
uh, of the system, uh, online registration, managing draws, uh, because that's that's about saving time, saving energy, uh, saving saving stress, and and that's really what everybody uses that part of, of GitHub. Uh, and what we're going to do next is uh, is scheduling uh, as well as as scoreboards, which is really about making the tournament itself uh, on the day run better, make it run it run it smoother, make it more professional, uh, m make the experience better for competitors, for coaches, for the audience, uh, and the judges as well. Uh, so we're now in in, in the scheduling uh, in the scheduling part, and uh, the schedule allows us to to allocate uh, our different our different categories into into different areas. So let's let's make a two area tournament here, uh, and we're just going to put in put in some categories to to the areas. So now we've got some patterns on, on area one and sparring on area two. Uh, we might actually want to do something like this, where uh, each area starts with patterns and then we do sparring later. Uh, here I'm selecting with shift click to, to select a range. Uh, and then we can drag and drop like, like this. And first of all, we have the ability to, to predict how uh, how long it's going to take to to run a given area and 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 when when a given uh, a given uh, match will start. So let's say we're, we're going to start this uh, at nine, both of them, uh, and the system is going to give us a prediction of uh, of, of when 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 a given 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 bout will bout will start. And now, depending on on how how we want to do this, we might be happy here. Uh, we also have the ability to to split up uh, categories into smaller chunks. For example, if we if we think it's really important for uh, for competitors to not fight back to back, uh, let's say for example, let's look at let's look at P twenty one. So this right now is uh, is an elimination, but but actually it's three competitors, and we might do a round robin here. So let's change it like so. And if we go back to schedule, we have the new three three fights here in P twenty one, and then if we split it here into in, into matches, uh, we can see that uh, that competitor one one zero needs to go twice in a row. As well as one, three, four, and in in real life, in in ITF patterns, this would probably be fine uh, because it's not a hard contact event. Uh, but but we have the ability to to schedule these individually. Uh, we can also put in a color coding to to keep track of, of which which is which category. So so we would we might do something like this. Uh, we might split. Uh, P26 into rounds like so and maybe do something like this so that there's uh, there's something in between maybe this five here in between is maybe too much so we split it further uh, and do something like this we also can have the ability to do this automatically so so we could select all the patterns uh, Select from here until until here. Select all of them, uh, and then say uh, order, uh, and then interlace automatically. And, and here the system will uh, try to come up with an ordering where everybody gets uh, a decent amount uh, of rest in between in between their bouts. Uh, so what the system came up with is is the following: we we start with P21, 26, sorry, and then we go until the semifinals of that category. Then we go to, to 21, to the merged category, and then do finals, and then, then interlace basically one category at a time until we're done with everything. Uh, 
so so this this looks pretty pretty good we're happy if we if we were not we could try uh try doing this again running a new new order and there's an element of randomness how to how uh automatic interlacing works and uh and uh depending on the setup we might get a different order when we when we try to run a new uh new ordering and in this case i think that that's what happened like so and the the system keeps uh, keeps the predictions updated at all times uh, we have the ability to change the settings of, of how long we think each category is going to take, uh, which is here in timing settings. Uh, let's let's clear our selection here and, and see if we're happy with the schedule otherwise. Uh, in ITF events, we'll usually wait until the end to do power tests. Uh, that's what we're going to do here now as well. And, uh, and yeah, uh, look, I'm, I'm happy with this, this scheduling. Uh, and we're ready to jump into, uh, in, into the scoreboards. So for each area, we have uh, two kinds uh, of, of scoreboards here, really. So we have the operator view and the audience view. Now, the audience view looks like this. Uh, so this is a generic uh, points scoreboard so for example in in itf rules if if uh, patterns were run in a way where uh, it's just five judges and they show red or blue uh, as the winner uh, that's what you use here just put in put in the number of, of flags uh, for each competitor and this is this is then this then would be set up on on a tv or a projector that's that's audience facing uh, so so we've got uh from the audience point of view, we've got red on the right and blue blue on the left. Uh, and then we also have the operators scoreboard uh, like this, which is similar. Uh, it's the it's uh, flipped uh, flipped in terms of colors uh, and handedness. And then we have a few controls here, uh, mainly mainly here putting in putting in the scores. So let's pretend it was a win for it was a close win for red. Uh, the operator would put in the score. And then it would be reflected here in real time on on the uh, on the audience screen, and, and these don't need to be on the same computer. Uh, so what I'm what I'm doing nowadays is running uh, running these audience screens from Chromecasts, uh, from maybe from the jury table, uh, just so that we can we can we, we can we have more flexibility there, and and yeah, fewer fewer cables. Um, uh, anyway, the the operator would here say then okay Hong wins. Uh, there's an announcement, and then we go to the next one uh, according to according to the schedule. And, and what happened uh, on the schedule side is that that uh, the system set, uh, noticed okay now it's 11:53 a.m. when we're doing this demo. Uh, so actually we were <laughs> we were three hours late. Uh, but it updated every every prediction based on that new information. So now we now we've got new numbers here, and and this is basically how we would how we would run the tournament on the day. Uh, we would go through patterns, and then when sparring comes up, the the uh, the scoreboard changes because it it works in a different way. Uh, and, and let's look at the wireless scoring next because that's uh, that's uh, relevant in in, uh, in in ITS sparring. So next we're going to look at the sparring scoreboard. Uh, and here on the left we have the operator view and then on the right we have the audience view. So in, in real life this would be uh, facing away from us. Uh, it might be behind us. Uh, that's nice because then we can we can see we can also see what's there. First of all we have the timer here. Uh, we can say okay it's a two times two minute thing. There's a let's say 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds, 30, 60 seconds rest in between, uh, and then we can put a timer on here. Uh, and then we have the ability to to attach uh, these phones to to the scoreboard so that we can score wirelessly, uh, and, and we we get this QR code uh, that we're going to scan. This is a this is Samsung, an old Samsung Android Android phone. Uh, 
and we're gonna and we're gonna get something like this. Uh, now we're attached as judge four. Uh, so now we when we give a point to red, it, it gets displayed here in real time. And now red has one point. Red has one uh, judge vote as well. Uh, so we can we can just score from here. And now compared to uh, the offline way of, of, of scoring for ITF sparring, uh, the corner judge no longer needs to worry about uh, warnings and deductions. So, so uh, they just need to uh, look at look at the action and then give give points. Uh, so, so this this frees up some capacity here. Uh, so, so uh, in this in these rules, we only have uh, the point button and then uh, a take back, which basically means here. Uh, that, uh, that something happened where the point that they gave uh, was an accident or, 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 or they, they gave it and, and then uh, let's say the, the, the center referee stops the fight and, set, and gives a warning which means that, uh, that the point was invalid so, so they, can, they can take it back. Uh, there's a vibration feedback uh, on, on the phone so that uh, you, can, you can use this sort of not and not look at your hands and then and still be sure that uh, that your points got points got through uh, this tends to save a lot of time in in ITF rules uh, at the end since there's no, no tallying of, of, of the scores uh, and, and it's also it's also it also uh, helps the competitor and the judges uh, no sorry the competitor and the coach and especially the audience to to uh, to see what's happening uh, in, in real time so so in uh, so this really makes uh, sparring a more spectator-friendly sport because uh, now you know you can see who's winning, uh, and you can see when when, when somebody scores uh, scores on the final seconds and it, and it turns around the fight. Uh, uh, you get these really dramatic endings endings this way. Now, now one question is is always how uh, if if we're using this sort of online system uh, uh, on the day, how do we how do we make sure that we we can get online at the venue? Uh, and yes, this is this is uh, this all online uh, can't be used offline. And, and what I usually do nowadays is that I bring my own Wi-Fi. So this is an LTE router. Uh, so we just plug in a SIM card here, uh, and we can get on get on the LTE or three G network, uh, and then and then make uh, make our own Wi-Fi network here. Uh, these have gotten pretty cheap uh, right now. I think I paid around 100 euro for this. Uh, and uh, there's a link to it on, on the Kia blog. This is preferable to using any kind of venue Wi-Fi because uh, it's a good idea to have a dedicated system there. Uh, and uh, because many venues will have, will, will have some kind of Wi-Fi, but then uh, it, it's really hard to tell how reliable that's gonna be uh, when when 200 competitors and, and 300 spectators show up so so it's a really good idea to have these uh, uh, have these devices that, that that just give more confidence in, in the uh, in the connection in a really small tournament maybe you have one area or two areas we uh, we could we could get away with uh, sharing sharing our connection from a phone uh, but but these do really help Another nice thing we can do when we're using uh, electronic scoring uh, is that we can set up live streams that uh, that contain the scores and contain uh, the competitors' names, and this uh, is done with the help of a green screen. Uh, so for each uh, each area, we have uh, this kind of uh, view that that has a green background and then has a, a kind of TV-like graphic uh, that shows the current situation uh, on the uh, of, of the match so if we if we start the clock here uh, it's going to start running and if we if we give give warnings and scores uh, the situation is gonna uh, is gonna change and now uh, with the help of a camera and a laptop we're able to uh, overlay uh, overlay these graphics on a, uh, on a video stream and then we can just stream live to Facebook so so this here, uh, is is an example of, uh, of of an earlier of an earlier tournament where uh, where we sent a live stream and and this is uh, this has been popular uh, this has been popular with with our competitors and uh, and the audience 
you can you can watch your fight later. You can uh, if your if your child is is uh, is in a tournament, you can't make it. You can still watch from from somewhere else, uh, and it really uh, really helps uh, helps uh, get out the word. Uh, so so that's that's another uh, benefit of running uh, running tournaments online and using using the scoreboard system. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, you can always reach me by email or through my Facebook page. Have a great day.